diverse ETF matrix uh, that I talked of in the book. Um, but how do you set up from from scratch? Let's um, let's actually do that now. So we'll close this off. I won't save. Okay, so open up a spreadsheet. The first thing you're going to want to do is get four sheets uh, and name them. So the first sheet, to name the sheets, you just right click on them, click on rename, and then you just type in what you'd like them to be called. So our sheets are going to be called price history, ETF tickers, log returns, matrix. So I'll just pause the video and do that. Okay, the next thing I want to do is just um, to make it easier on ourselves later is enter the ticker symbols for the markets you're interested in running a matrix on. Um, so as I said earlier, we're going to do this on the major sector groups, uh, US stock markets, um, and they're going to be consumer discretionary, consumer staples, consumer goods, consumer services, energy, financials, healthcare, industrial, materials, technology, telecommunications, real estate and utilities. Okay, so I'll pause the video again uh, and I'll let update those ticker symbols. Okay, so once that's done, you're then going to want to um, put the, the, the ticker symbols on our price history sheet, our log return sheet, and then our matrix. So if we put them on the price uh, history sheet first, just um, copy all of the ticker symbols, right click, copy and then go to your price history sheet and then in B1 left click right click uh, and then what you want to do is paste them across the row so in the paste options here you have this little transpose button so just scroll across to that left click it so there you have your ticker symbol so that's the price history ready go to your log returns and then do the same thing just left click in B1 right click scroll across to paste options transpose left click on that and then finally you're going to want to set your matrix so on your matrix I recommend um, starting in C2 so left click in C2 right click and then transpose it across the row and then you're going to want to come to B3 left click right click and this time you're not going to want to transpose it so you paste it down the column now while you're on the matrix uh, sheet before before we leave it um, when we actually have our matrix populated we're going to want it to be more symmetrical so um, to do that just highlight all of the ticker symbols on the column here and then make sure you've clicked the home tab at the top come across the format left click left click on row height and change that to something like 30 click OK um, and that's just going to give us a neater uh, and easier to see matrix at the end okay the next thing we're going to want to do is download our price data so come back to the ETF tickers sheet left click on that and then we're going to want to use the add-in I showed you in the previous video again so come up to the top here left click your add-ins click on Y download get history bulk ticker range click the little dash there scroll across your tickers press enter we're gonna do three months so let's go December 2013 04 daily and just if we output the range in E1 that's fine make sure you've ticked date and adjusted close and just left click on download So that's updating all the price data for the sector ETFs. Next thing you'll need to do again is just to sort your price data from newest to older. So highlight all of the first column of dates, right click, go down to sort and then scroll across to newest to oldest, left click that and then left click expand the selection and left click on sort okay so all our adjusted closes are now in the right order now the next thing we need to do is put the adjusted closes into our price history as I said uh, earlier in the video at the moment it's a bit of an annoying thing but we have to manually copy and paste them over um, as soon as I've got a fix sorted for that 
um, I will let you know um, by email so that won't be a problem at all um, I should have a fix for that in the next week or two um, but for now I'm just going to delete all of the columns which include dates so I'm just left with the adjusted close columns but the first thing I'm going to do is just copy and paste the first column of dates into our price history sheet so highlight it again right click left click on copy come over to price history and then from A2 you just want to right click and paste okay so I'm going to go ahead and delete all of the unwanted columns now um, and then I'll come back to the video oh by the way to delete the columns just right click um, in the the actual letter columns themselves so right click where it says E and just click on delete right click on F delete right click G delete and just go through them all like that now as I was doing that I realized um, that I'd accidentally put uh, the wrong tick symbol for materials so it's XLB so make sure that your symbol is XLB and then make sure that where I've said XCB you just change that to XLB in each of the different sheets so we'll very quickly do that my apologies so I'll be there and XL be there okay so that's fine so we now have the adjusted closes for all of our ticker symbols now we simply copy and paste them into our price history sheet so just left click keep your finger down scroll right across the sheet and right down to the bottom of all the adjusted close prices once they're all highlighted right click and left click on copy left click on the price history sheet and then in B2 just left click right click and then paste so we now have the adjusted close prices uh, for each of the dates we specified for each of the ticker symbols we specified so the next thing we're going to need to do is calculate the log returns I come into the log returns sheet click in B2 and then the uh, formula is equals LN and then if you come to your price history sheet click in B2 and then divide and then on staying on the price history sheet click B3 and then close your bracket press enter so there we have the log return so we're going to want to change those t to percentages in a bit but for now we want the log returns for all of the ticker symbols across all of the dates so highlight the the, the value we have in B2 um, and where it's got that little black box just click it drag it across and then drag it down about 60 whoops a daisy we should have about 60 prices to be playing with there we are, so it's 59. Um, with all those highlighted, just right click, come down to Format Cells, left click on that, left click on Percentage, which is on the Numbers tab, Decimal Place is 2, click OK. So there we have our log returns. Next thing we need to do is define the names of each of these columns so to do that just click on the first price point of each column and just drag down the column once they're all highlighted right click and then scroll down to define name left click that it should automatically name um, the same the same it should give it the same name as the ticker symbol at the top of each column so that's fine just click OK so I'll show you once more, just click on the top price of the column, scroll all the way down, right click, left click on define name, make sure that it's named the ticker symbol and click OK and then just go ahead and do that for each of these columns. Once you've finished defining the names of each of the columns you'll want to left click on your matrix sheet and then we're going to need to enter a new formula in C3 so in the top left hand side of your matrix so just left click in there and then we're going to want to enter the following formula equals 
absolute, so ABS, and that's because we're not interested in negative numbers for the purposes of this matrix because if we want to go long or short then a high correlation whether it be positive or negative so inverse correlations are gonna be just as risky for us uh, from a trend following perspective when we're buying and selling so really we just want the absolute values so anyway equals ABS the bracket will automatically open and then we want the coral function so corel the bracket will automatically open and then we want the indirect function so indirect the bracket again will automatically open and now we want to do the dollar sign b3 close the bracket comma indirect function again The bracket will automatically open and we want C dollar two and then close the bracket three times, press enter. Um, and if it's worked, then you should get a one in the XLY XLY, because obviously they have an exact correlation with each other. So highlight uh, cell C3 on your matrix sheet and where it's got the little black box just scroll it across to XLU and then bring it right down and um, again a way to know if you've done this correctly is you should have a, 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 um, a diagonal row of ones going straight through your matrix and that's obviously because the exact correlations between the exact same ticker symbols okay so that is your correlation matrix now when it's all highlighted we can just right click first thing you want to do is left click on format cells and where it says uh, number click on number two decimal places click OK now if you want to make your uh, matrix look a bit snazzier and it'll be easier to quickly at a glance see how correlated the different sectors are just highlight all of the coefficients right click excuse me highlight all the coefficients come up click on home and then you want to left click conditional formatting come down to color scales and just scroll across to the second one here which is red yellow green color scale left click on it click outside and there we are so we have the reds are the ones which means the the, the highest correlated um, sectors and obviously greens are the lower correlated sectors and, and we have varying shades you know um, and there you go that's basically how you build correlation matrix and as you can see as it's the equity markets the correlations are very very high across multiple sectors uh, and that is the nature of the beast and that's why you do need to be careful when trading lots of stocks um, and, and not fall into the trap of thinking that just because you're diverse across sectors that you're keeping a diverse portfolio because as you can see here um, many 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 stock sectors are highly correlated to one another so you do need to be careful other things you can do is obviously it can be hard to remember what these ticker symbols actually are so you could actually have called you know instead of actually calling the matrix by the ticker symbols we could have typed in consumer discretionary etc and if we come back to the matrix I showed you from the beginning of the video, that's exactly what I've done here because I wouldn't remember all the ticker symbols for each of these markets. So I've actually renamed them, you know, the actual markets themselves. So corn, wheat, cocoa, etc. Um, and, and that's it for this video series. Now I know that this, uh, this video has been pretty long winded. Um, <clears throat> so I hope you've been able to follow it and I hope I haven't confused you too much uh, if I have I do apologize um, but I say absolutely get in touch with me um, I'd love to help you get your matrix sorted out if you're having any difficulties with it um, and for the last time I just want to thank you very much for buying the book and for watching these videos and downloading these extra um, spreadsheets and stuff um, um, I mean the thing with these matrices is you only really want to run them maybe once a month 
just to keep abreast of kind of what's going on in the market and where the money's flowing to and from really um you know very helpful in, in a kind of uh, risk off environment um because what you begin to see then is uh, much higher correlations amongst uh, amongst lots of different asset classes um so that can help you kind of uh, keep your position sizing small when markets might be getting a little bit um, a little bit too volatile so uh, again thanks very much and um you'll he be hearing from me soon regarding the updated fix for our add-in uh take care bye